Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. After a couple of Archons who protected us, and an Archon who we needed protection from, we are now in the era of Archons that need protecting. In this trial, we'll be judging the Hydro Archon herself, Farina, at Constellation Zero, and with the 4-star sword, the Festering Desire. Farina is the fifth and the newest Archon to be playable in Genshin Impact version 4.2, and she is the much needed breath of fresh air to our Genshin Impact meta. And with each Archon honestly getting more and more convoluted kits, Farina is here to dazzle and wow us with her performance as we all drown in a deluge of Hydro. My Farina is using the Festering Desire at Refinement 5 which is an event exclusive weapon that us Genshin Boomers obtained all the way back in version 1.2. For all y'all Genshin Zoomers that might have a Festering Desire for the Festering Desire, the Fluve Sandre Ferryman is a very reasonable fish to play friendly alternative. For my Furina's relics, she is using the four piece golden troop. <laughs> with an HP% percent timepiece, an HP% percent goblet, and a crit circlet. Why an HP% percent goblet? Through her artifacts, her weapon, and her kit, she actually gets a ton of bonus damage. So an HP% percent goblet is actually a really good option. She is of course at Constellation 0, and her talents are at 6, 10, and 10. This video will go over her kit in great detail, how she can buff Nuvalette and others, a couple free to play friendly team showcases, and finally my opinion on Farina at the end of the video. <laughs> and without further ado, the show must go on, with the opening act being her basic attack, Soloist's Solicitation. Clearly with an HP focus build and an elemental skill damage focus build, she's going to destroy the Regis Vine with her adorable basic attack animations. Seriously, this alone is worth getting her in my opinion. Her basic attacks are actually quite unique. They deal a tiny amount of hydro damage, which doesn't actually apply hydro, and it deals Usha or Numa damage depending on which mode she's in. As for her charge attack, besides this extremely dazzling animation, actually makes her switch modes between her Usha and Numa modes. Switching between her Usha and Numa modes will change which version of her elemental skill is active, which is the perfect intermission to talk about her elemental skill, Salon Solitaire. Her elemental skill is the most sophisticated performance in all of Teyvat, starring the Salon Solitaire trio the ever most chivalrous octopus, Gentil Home Osher, the most reliable of seahorses, Superintendente Cheval Marine, and the pinnacle of elegance, Marine Muselle Crabalata. Let's see what this ensemble of talented sea creatures can do. Well, without any sort of buffs or anything, our Salon Solitaire trio has already cleanly conked out our Regisvine audience. And Farina can use her charge attack to switch to the Numa mode, which brings in the backup actor, Singer of Many Waters, who will heal the on-field character. Anyway, going back to the main show, there's a lot that's going on with this elemental skill. From my observations, it generates one particle every three seconds. Each salon animal friend has their own independent attack speeds and ICDs. Very notably, whenever one of our sophisticated sea creature friends attacks an enemy, it drains some HP from every character in our party. However, it stops draining HP once a character reaches 50% or less HP. Also, for every character that's above 50% HP, 
HP in our party, the Salon Solitaire will do 10% more damage for up to 40% additional damage, which is its own multiplier similar to Yoamiya's elemental skill. Now there's a lot more to this performance, like attack speeds and hydro application and HP drain. So I'll just throw these pretty chunky charts onto the screen for those of you nerds like me out there who care. I added 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and 30 second benchmarks for her skill. 30 seconds you say? That's right, this thing has a 20 second cooldown with an extremely long 30 second duration. I should also mention that the Singer of Many Waters, aka the healing mode, doesn't deal any damage to the enemy or apply any hydro or generate any particles. Literally all it does is heal the on-field character. Now another great attribute of the Salon members is that they don't tether you to circle impact, and they follow you extremely far, pretty much anywhere you go. Their targeting also feels very reliable. Whew, all right, with this we can finally move on to her elemental burst. Let the people rejoice. Her elemental burst does a lot of stuff, with the most important part being that she provides bonus damage based on the percentage of max HP lost or gained during her elemental burst. Losing or gaining 1% of HP on any of your characters leads to a stack of fanfare. With 300 max fanfare and each stack at burst level 10 providing 0.25% bonus damage, this means that Farina's bursts can provide up to 75% bonus damage to your entire team, including off-field characters. With the HP draining from her elemental skill and some healing from a teammate, you can expect to build a lot of fanfare stacks. You also gain some healing percent bonus based on your fanfare stacks as well. Now, how do you actually know how much fanfare you have? There are some visual indicators. As we can see, the crowd of sophisticated opera-enjoying sea critters grows in size. Finally, at 300 fanfare, a whooshing glittery animation appears, which honestly whooshes past me a lot because it's a bit hard to see. Fortunately, after her pretty complicated rest of the kit, her passives are pretty straightforward. With her first passive, Endless Waltz, rewarding you for overhealing the active character with any healing source besides Furina's. The other team members will heal for 2% two times. Her second passive just adds some bonus damage based on her max HP, capping at 28% bonus damage to her Salon Solitaire when she has 40,000 hit points. Oh, and it makes her healing mode heal a little bit faster. Anyway, let's see her entire performance in action. Well, we all knew our Regiswine audience wasn't going to be able to sit through this entire performance. In this example, I used Barbara's Super Omega Party Heal to heal the entire party, which instantly built up the fanfare stacks to 300. And with a clamorous audience, Madame Muzel Krabalata was motivated to hit for 33,527 damage compared to the zero fanfare Madame Muzel Krabalata from earlier, which hit for 25,282 damage. Alright, we finally made it through her kit. Let's take a look at some situations where she can buff her teammates. I'm sure many of you all are wondering how she performs with Nouvellette. Well, my Nouvellette is at Constellation 6, and honestly testing is just extremely inconsistent with Furina anyway, due to the nature of fanfare as well as Nouvellette's passive where he loses damage as he loses HP. But we can still get a rough idea here. I'm also simulating a Constellation 0 Nouvellette with the prototype Amber. We have a couple key takeaways here. Constellation 0 Nouvellette normally runs three other elements on his team to get three Draconic stacks. However, with Furina, he's only able to get two Draconic stacks. This leads to him basically not really actually gaining any damage from Farina's fanfare stacks. <laughs> Despite this though, Fiorina is still an incredible teammate for Nouvellet. 
since her personal damage is great, as we saw earlier, and they both generate hydro particles for each other. The next scenario to keep in mind is at Constellation 1 Uvalette. Constellation 1 Uvalette can now obtain three Draconic stacks even with Furina. With Constellation 1, Uvalette will gain a ton of damage from Furina's fanfare stacks, especially since Uvalette is able to stack them extremely quickly. I also did a very quick test with Risley, just monitoring his N5. Take this with an even greater grain of salt because I tried to simplify this as much as possible and my Risley is also at Constellation 6. Anyway, Risley will absolutely gain a lot of damage from having Farina on his team and he'll also be able to comfortably play Freeze with her. Healing might be an issue at Constellation 0 though so do keep that in mind and you will absolutely want to pair these two with a healer. A really cool side effect of Fiorina's HP drain is demonstrated in this next team. Many characters can now comfortably run the incredibly great artifact set, the Marichasi Hunter. My Noel is using the Marichasi Hunter in this double geo double hydro team, and it actually feels pretty great to use. Again, the main point of this example is to show that many on-field characters can now use the Marichasi Hunter thanks to Fiorina's HP drain. Alright, so now let's talk about some more teams for Farina and how they performed in Abyss 12. When it comes to teams, Farina being an off-field Hydro God is an extremely flexible character. She does have the caveat of highly desiring a healer on her team, which means that she is essentially the buff to healers that we have all been clamoring for since release. Mono Hydro has never felt better, and even with Barbara as the driver here who literally does no damage, this team effortlessly crushed the current Abyss 12. And this is with multiple disadvantages, including the inability to break the Seahorse's Electro Shield, as well as the super high Hydro resistance of the Mirror Maiden. And with Barbara literally only providing healing to the team and with a useless Abyss of Moon. Despite all this, this team was very comfortably able to 9 star the current top half of Abyss 12. If you have 5 star substitutes for this team, like Kokumi instead of Barbara who actually does damage, Kazuha instead of Sucrose who actually buffs damage even more, and Yelan instead of Shincho who further buffs damage and does more damage, this team will feel absolutely goaded. Although do keep in mind that for this specific Abyss 12, Xingqiu might actually be better than Yulan because of his resistance shred against the Unicorn and the Mirror Maiden, but I digress. Furina also elevates many other full team healers like Jean, Mika, Baizu, etc. As these full team healers will be able to build fanfare like crazy. Anyway, I also did another run with a Hyper Bloom team. Although Furina applies a lot less off-field Hydra than either Xingqiu or Yulan, and despite the fact that her fanfare buff is basically useless for the rest of the team, for some reason this team with Yao Yao as the full team healer just felt ridiculously good to use. I think this is likely due to Farina's own great personal damage as well as her occasional AoE Hydro application thus creating enough Hyper Blooms to still get the job done. My Furina is using an Energy Recharge Sands here though since she is the only Hydro character on this team. Regardless, the clear times were all within effortless 9 star times for both the Mono Hydro team and this Hyper Bloom team, and it really goes to show just how flexible Furina is and how elevating she is for many forgotten healers. So yeah, Furina is an absolute delight to add to your roster in Genshin Impact, and not just because of her colorful roster of Salon Solitaire. She is the massive buff that so many downtrodden healers have needed all this time, allowing for many healers to finally provide that massive offensive boost that they so desperately needed. No longer is Bennett the only healer that can actually buff your team's damage by a ton. She enables more build options via her HP drain thanks to the Marichasi Hunter, and as such, you're farming for both a main DPS and Furina in one dungeon. Furina is of course not without her drawbacks, with some minor energy issues, lack of consistency due to the chaotic nature of HPs fluctuating all the time, and she even makes squishy characters even squishier with the HP drain. And also honestly in many situations, she can be considered just a side grade to either Xingqiu or Yilan, but I do think she can just as easily replace Xingqiu or Yilan in many different teams. Although it's equally worth mentioning that she also pairs incredibly well with either Xingqiu or Yilan or even both. I do think she lives up to her supposed reputation as the Hydra Archon. 
bringing in a fresh new chaotic playstyle and a whole new meta surrounding massive fluctuations to your team's hit points. Let me know what you think about our favorite Fiorina down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this content, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.